around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. say two words before he gets it. He was dead, I reckon. Yes, sir. I know he wasn't just hurt or he'd have got back home one way or another. Jim was like that. For three days and nights, my mouth kept saying he's alive someplace. But my inside's no different. I know right along he was dead. Jim and me was that close. I'm sorry, Miss Morgan. Where was he, Marshal? About uh, three miles north of here in a little gully that branches off a big wash. He was most likely riding the gullies for antelope and his horse threw him. All the way I figured his foot hung in the stirrup. He got dragged. See? We came out of the horse right after noon. After that, we knew what to look for. I, uh... I figured he died real fast, Miss Morty. I'm glad for that. Uh, Doc figured the same thing. Been lightning all evening way off there in the west. Spring rain's about due, I reckon. Yes, sir. It's building up to him. He laying out there in the night somewhere, Marshal? A doc took him into Dodge, ma'am. We had a buckboard brought. Uh, Doc's uh, sending a woman out from town to stay with you for a while. That won't be needed. It ain't I'm hard. Lord knows I got a hurt growing inside of it by the minute. But I'll learn to make room for it. Live with it. Well, ma'am, I... always been strong, Jim and me. Earth folks, he called it. With our feet in the ground like roots, drawing strength out of the land. Marshal Jim didn't die by no accident. He was done for in cold blood. What do you mean by that? Neighbor fellow over there west covets our land, Burl Albin. 
Rick, and he covets me, too, the way he acted. Took to calling me Harriet a while back instead of Mrs. Morney. Jim took a fist to him over that. But Jim was dragged and then kicked to death by his horse this morning. I know different, Marshal. Jim and me was that close. The Lord ought to strike Burl Alton with lightning for what he'd done. Or maybe he will. If I help some. What are you going to do? I don't rightly know, Marshal. Not before I think on it. I've got to lay down and think and listen. A long time, maybe. And finally, I'll know. Jim and me was that close. Sakes, man, have you gone clean out of your mind? I'd hate to think so, Doc. Well, that's the biggest piece of poppycock I ever heard of. Well, it sounds different, though, when you hear her say it. I don't care who says it. Matt, you saw Jim Morney's body, same as I did, and all the marks on it. What did it look like to you? Like he'd been dragged and his horse had kicked into death. And that's exactly what happened to him. Then you go over the body again like I asked you to this morning. Oh, man, I've done nothing else all day but to go over it. Only I sure figured you must have some better reason for asking than, than just the wild ravings of a widow that's half out of her mind with grief. Harriet Morney's not the kind to go out of her mind or even half out of it, Doug. I don't know about that. Those strong ones fool you sometimes, Matt. They, they break up inside instead of on the surface. Yeah, maybe. Eh, not that Burl Alban isn't capable of murder, in my opinion. He's sneaky to cat him out. Confound it, Matt. He sure couldn't teach a man's horse to throw him and then to kick him to death. No, I guess not. Yes, but... not. By golly, you're still half convinced. No, but she's so sure, Doc. It's not just a matter of suspicion. She knows. And the way she says it, it gets you to wonder if maybe she could be right. That's all. Well. Maybe Burl Alban has had his eye on the Morney farm, but so have a lot of other people, more than likely. It's mighty good land. Yeah. And then, too, last fall, Alban... Got out of line with Mrs. Morning. Jim had to knock some sense into it. Yeah, I heard about it. But it doesn't change the fact that Jim Morning was kicked to death by his horse. It's plain fact against a widow woman's family. All right, Doc. All right. I won't argue with you. Well, that's good. That's good. Then get a good night's sleep and forget it. I said I wouldn't argue with you about it. I didn't say I'd forget it. <laughs> Thinks all right. What she's been saying. 
She doesn't get along very well with her husband, does she, Pearl? I didn't get along with him at all. But the fact remains, Marshal. He was thrown, dragged, kicked to death by his own horse. Yeah. Well, this morning doesn't put much stock in the facts. They're going to have to take that woman away one of these days. Uh, Mr. Dillon, Mr. Dillon, could I see him uh, alone? Excuse me. Please. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, now, what is it, Chester? Well, uh, the Hoffman boy is ruined in, Mr. Dillon. It's his morning, Sandy. What for? Well, she wants you to come out there tonight, right away. What? She told the Hawkins boy to say she's found out how to make the lightning strike. All right, then we'll go right away. I declare if I was anywhere, I just think start to melt and run. You're never satisfied, Chester. Two months from now, it'll be the test. Well, there's a week in between the holes. It'll be nice. Oh, uh, watch for it. She really has lost her mind. I don't know, Chester. Come in. All right, Chester. Hey, Chester. Marshal, Chester. All right, ma'am. Pull up chairs and sit. Go say it. Thank you, ma'am. I'm mighty sorry to have to bring you out in this, but when happenings choose their own times, the body can't alter them. Well, it wasn't a bad ride, man. The storms let up a lot. My, didn't it rain this afternoon, though? Yeah, it was a real cloudburst for a while. Come down in buckets out here. The big wash out there was running banks full for an hour it was up. Yeah, it was quite a rain. Stumps and tree limbs, brush, I don't know what all come washing down. Kept snagging up and jamming there back of the corral. I had to go traipsing out every 20 minutes and work at least so the water wouldn't back up and flood the barn. It's a lot of work for a woman running a place like this alone. For some women, maybe. But I'm strong, like I told you. One of the earth folks. There's still a limit. Marshal, I was made to go out there to that wash today. That's why the storm was and the branches snagging up. Uh, I don't understand. Well, Jim was earth folks, too. Ten days ago, I give him back to the earth. After the ceremony that day, I, I stood up there on Boot Hill and I talked to Jim. I asked for him and the earth to get together to give me a sign. To let me know what to do. Well, today it happened. This morning, the Hawkins boys said something about... Uh... Lightning striking. It ain't struck yet, Marshal. But it's ready to. I want to show you something I pulled out of that driftwood in the wash this afternoon. I reckon it was buried, shallow like, up on one of the gullies. Or maybe just throwed into a thicket and left. Anyhow, the rain fetched it down to me. It's just a old limb off a mulberry tree. That's not a limb. That's a club. Look at the other end of it, Chester. My gracious sake. Yeah. I figure he might have roped Jim off his horse, or, or maybe he caught him on foot. Anyway, it looks like that's what he used. So he beat him to death with a club. With a horseshoe nailed on the end of it. Chester, shut the door. He, he's coming, Mr. Dillon, right down the street there. Yeah, I know. I saw him from the window. I can't figure what he's been doing. He rode into town a half hour ago. Having a couple of drinks, I guess. He doesn't know why I sent for him. He's worried. You gonna leave that club laying right there on the table in plain sight? Yeah. Pull the chairs up around the table, will you? All right. Well, first to me, if he sees that club, gets him in the sink, he'll figure out some lie. It yeah, may be, but I'm betting the other way. All right, sit down over there, Chester. And don't say anything. And don't pay any attention to that club, huh? Yes, sir. Good morning, Marshal. Oh, come on in, bro. Yeah. 
Well, we sure did have ourselves a fine ra- rain yesterday. Yeah. Sit down, bro. Sit down? Yeah. Sit down. Well, uh... Yeah, sure. What were you saying about the rain? Huh? The rain? Oh, well, it's just, uh... It's a fine rain, so... What do you want to see me about, Doc? Don't you know, bro. Chester didn't say nothing except... You want to see me? Well, that's not so much to see as hear you, I guess. Hear me? Mm Mm-hmm. Hear me what? Hear you tell me how you killed Jim Morning. You're crazy. How you beat him to death with a club and made it look like he was thrown and kicked by his horse. It's a lie. That woman's lying on me. This club lying on you, too, bro. That ain't the club. I took the shoe off after... After you'd used it. Maybe you just thought you did, bro. You dreamed that a murderer is not always in his right mind. No, you ain't gonna do this to me. You're under arrest for murder. No, I'll kill you, Don't be a fool. Don't try it, bro. Robert, you know... He was a fool, Chester. No jury would have convicted him on that kind of evidence. Well, seems to me he was kind of a fool not to have done like he claimed. Ripped that horseshoe off the club after he used it. He wasn't just claiming he did rip it off. But there it is, right there on the table. Sure, the club Ms. Morney made. Ms. Morney? It was just stretching chance too far, Chester, to figure that thing would turn up right at her doorstep. She's not a very good liar either, not if you watch her eyes. But why would she do a thing like that? She was hoping for just what happened. That brother would be thrown off balance enough to give himself away. But how could she know that's how he done it? A woman's intuition or some pretty good guesswork. Or maybe the earth told her, Chester. The earth? Better go find Doc and get him over here. He's going to have to make out a coroner's report. Directed by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chapter, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.